Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India start this exciting journey on a subject called convex optimization. Convex optimization involves the minimization of a convex function subject to a convex set C. Now of course, this is a very special class of optimization problems. This class is special and why it is important to applications and why good algorithms can be constructed about it that would be essentially the matter of this course. So, we would now like to refresh our knowledge about maxima and minima. So, in doing so, we will go back to high school once again and we will concentrate on a function say from R to R and let us see what we have learnt in high school and let us see what we mean by a minimum of f. Of course, this meaning of minimum is clearly understood because a point x bar of R is called a minimum. If f of x is bigger than f of x bar for every x in R n, for every x in R. So, you see here let us draw a diagram to show you one such example. So, this function f x is a parabola x square where you can see at x equal to 0 the function reaches a minimum. This function f x is the absolute value of x and at this point x, equal, x bar equal to 0 this also achieves a minimum. Both of these two functions though we have not defined convex functions yet are also convex functions. But this is not the only part of the story because one has to remember that I can give you a function where this might not always be true. For example, let me look into this function. This function is nice continuous, but here I pull it down. So, this function becomes unbounded below. So, there is no lower bound. So, we cannot really speak about a global minimum or the minimum the as the way we had defined earlier. So, the question uh, now arises can anything be extracted from this picture. If you look at this picture carefully, look at this point x bar, if I call, want to call it x bar, look at this range. So, 
for all x which is bigger than x tilde here f of x is bigger than f of x bar. This x bar is not really the global minimum, but then it could be helpful in many other ways and we call such an x bar a local minimum. More clearly, if, we are, if I want to define a local minimum, then let us do it in a more uh, erudite fashion. A point x bar in R is called a local minimum local minimum of f over r if there exists delta greater than 0 such that I am writing a shorthand s t for such that f of x is bigger in value than f of x bar for every x this is the mathematics symbol of for all the word for all is symbolized like this for all x in the open interval x bar minus delta to x bar plus delta for all x in this open interval excluding these two points x bar minus delta and x bar plus delta now this definition is there and I would uh, request you to look into this interesting thing where I have a function which does not have either a local minima or a local maxima. It is both unbounded below and above. This function f x is equal to x a cube. This function does not have a local minima a local maxima nothing in fact nor global minima nor global maxima. Of course, you might ask me I have been using the term local maxima without defining it, but you can define local maxima in the way I have defined local minima or and global or global maxima in the way I have defined global maxima. But there are certain functions which can be both unbounded below and bounded above and does not have any such things like local or global maxima. Once we have said this let us observe one little fact that f from r to r that we have defined is minimized or maximized over r. Can this maximization and minimization be done if we restrict it to restrict this function over a subset? The answer is very simple, but before I go into anything else, let me tell you in the whole course we would be essentially talking about minimization of a function because minimizing a function f x over x belonging to R n sorry x belonging to R is same as taking the maxima of the negative and then take a maxima again to take a maxima over the negative and then take a negative again to get the minimum. So, it is enough to speak about the minimum once you talk about the minimum you can also talk about the maximum. Now, let me tell you something uh, interesting in the sense that let us look back again at this function. f x equal to x square. So, if I talk about this class of functions f x equal to x square, 
then 0 was the minimum over whole of r. But now let me say let me pose you the problem of minimizing this function f x equal to x square over x restricted say to with the interval 1 2. So, basically now I Now, you can easily see the minimum value here is achieved at x equal to 1 is a actually the global minimum. Now, let us do a thing. Let us go back and look at again at this function f x equal to x a cube. If I restrict, if I now call for minimizing f x of equal to x a cube over the same interval 1, 2, you will immediately see that the minimum is achieved. In fact, the global minimum is achieved at x equal to 1. So, it clearly shows that the same problem which did not have a global maxima, global minima, local maxima, local minima has a global minimum at x equal to 1 and has a global maximum at x equal to 2. So, the whole problem paradigm changes once you add certain restrictions on the variables. Such restrictions are called constraints. Restrictions on the variable are called constraints. So, with this very basic idea, we will now expand our dimensions in the sense that we will now look at the problem of minimizing a function f over x in R n. Of course, you know R n, the n dimensional Euclidean space is a collection of vectors x, where x is represented through a n tuple of n numbers or rather a coordinate of n numbers, where each of these x i belongs to the real number set. That is, each of the x i's are real numbers. R n as you know is an important space and is equipped with the inner product. So, take any x in R n and any y in R n, this inner product is defined as follows. That is, you take the first component of x multiply it with the first component of y and then take the second component of y multiply them add them together and keep on doing so. So, this uh, inner product is basically a generalization of multiplication of two real numbers. We must now go and try to define what is the meaning of a local minima. We will you, you know what how to define a global minima, I need not uh, stress this issue of global minima. We need to define a local minima for a function from R n to R, but before doing so we need to speak about 
the notion of neighborhood in Rn. I understand that this course uh, or these lectures are been followed by a wide category of people rather uh, it is not that it is just been observed by mathematicians or people interested in mathematical optimization. I believe that it is also see, been seen by engineers and engineering students and uh, people working in uh, operations research, people working in industrial engineering. So, the idea here is not to be too mathematically correct. To say a neighborhood in Rn, yeah, we can say mathematically as follows that if I take a point x bar in Rn, then any open set which contains x bar can is defined as a neighborhood in Rn. But instead of doing so, we will be slightly not so rigorous, but for us largely neighborhood would mean the following ball. a ball of radius r centered at x bar. This consists of all z in R n whose distance from x bar is this is strictly less than r. Now, you might call Suddenly, I have given these two signs and I am calling this as distance between x bar and z. Now, this distance, the distance of a point x from the origin of the space R n is often written like this and referred to as the norm of x, but this norm actually of a point in R n actually means the distance of x from 0. So, how the norm is defined? So, for our case what we define would be called a Euclidean norm or a 2 norm. In doing so, how do we define the Euclidean norm and that is done again through an inner product. Suppose, I take the inner product of x with respect to x. So, this would become the defi by definition, this is simply a repeated application of the Pythagorean theorem and that would lead to the definition of norm x, because you see this is nothing but the distance of x from 0 calculated via the Pythagorean theorem or celebrated result in Euclidean geometry, which everybody seeing this course would know, because it is taught in the school level. Now, the very definition of the norm is because it is a length, we cannot put plus minus root over, we just have to put the positive sign. So, the norm has every criteria of a distance, because certain properties of norm I want to write down. So, norm of x is equal to 0 if and only if x is the 0 vector. If you scale up the vector x, whether you scale it up through a negative number or positive number, the answer is that the length of the new vector is the absolute value of lambda times the norm of x. And then there is this famous rule which says that the triangle inequality, which is based on the fact that sum of two angles, sum of two sides of a triangle is always greater than the third. This is called the triangle inequality, quite it would be quite helpful. Now, once I have this idea of distance from 0, of course, we can define the distance between two points x and z or x and y, distance between x and y in R n is given as 
So, once this is done, once you know this, you can actually draw a ball. Now, let me take x bar equal to 0 and let me take r, sorry r equal to 1. This is sometimes called as the unit ball. So, how would it look like and of course, take r n to be r 2. Basically, I am taking n equal to 2. So, if you look at this picture, so you have 0 and anything which is within the distance 1, but it should not be exactly 1. So, it is you look at this circular part, the circle. So, points on the circle are not in the neighborhood because the neighborhood has to be an open set. I am assuming that you have some idea about open and closed sets. Any point here, this, this dotted part apart from the boundary, this dotted part is what is called sometimes just denoted as this bold B. So, this is called the unit ball. So, if you take any ball centered at any other x bar, it would look like this of any radius r. Of course, you can define the closed ball which is defined like this, which is the closure of the ball that we have defined. It will be set of all z such that z minus x bar, of course, z is in r n less than or equal to r, we meet, means that we are now considering the boundary also. So, then this whole thing would become this one. Now, how do I go about defining a local minima? The definition of a local minima goes as follows. A point, see we are now what is a neighborhood as such? Neighborhood is nothing but generalization of the notion of a interval, a open interval around a point like, like we had said x bar plus delta and x bar minus delta is just the generalization of that in a higher dimensional space. A point x bar in R n is a local minimum of f if there exists delta greater than 0 such that the functional value of x is bigger than the functional value at x bar for all x in the open ball centered at x of radius delta. Just remember when we write this, we always say these balls, this is the center of the ball. Now, once you know this, you could now come and write down the definition for a local maxima. You could now try to write down the definition of a local minimum for a constraint problem. That is now we put restrictions on x. So, you might ask me what is your convex optimization, where has your convex functions etcetera all these things vanished. See convex optimization mean a sub class of optimization problems a very, very important subclass, but however, it is imperative on us that we have a look at the basic facts about maxima and minima, because without 
uh, understanding these very basic things, it is not really possible to go get into the depth of convex optimization. Uh, good news is that when we do convex optimization, we need not think about local minima, we just have to think about global minima, because the importance of convexity or convex optimization stems from the fact that whenever we minimize a convex function over a convex set, every local minima is a global minima, there is nothing called a local minima in convex optimization and that is why the subject is so powerful, so important, so important in applications. Now, we go for a local minimum for a constraint problem. So, here we are looking at a problem of minimizing f x over x element of some s, where s is a subset of R n, which could be whole of R n, it could be a proper subset and f as before a function from R n to R. So, you see these functions are always mapping an element in R n to R, because then we can actually new do the comparison. Of course, there is a wealth of literature, wealth of optimization, which talks about minimization of functions, when functions are defined from R n to say R m. So, that is a whole gamut of a different subject called vector optimization, which we will not uh, discuss. So, here what we do is, we have to observe that when we talk about a local minimum, we need to restrict ourselves to the set S. Suppose this is my set S, suppose this is not really the thing, because this is just an abstract discussion. The interesting part of mathematics is that just by doing certain abstract discussions, you can bring up on certain very important points immediately to the focus of the discussion. You see, if this is my x bar and I want to say it is a local minimum, then obviously, you are sure that for every x in the set S, f x bar need not be smaller than f x. So, what we do is to show that there would be a ball of radius delta, such that for this intersection of, of the ball with s, that is on this part, for every x in this part, function value at x here would be bigger than f x bar. That is, x bar is a local minimum. if there exists delta greater than 0, such that for all x in the ball surrounding x bar of radius delta, that is centered at x bar and of radius delta, s and also in C. So, all x which is in the in this particular set, which is the intersection of B delta x bar and C, f of x goes over x bar. So, you now take the responsibility of defining a local maxima and a global maxima. Global maxima is obviously, when you have this def definition over all x belonging to R n. So, uh, once these basic facts are known, let us go ahead and ask this question, how do we find a minimum? So, in order to find a minimum, we must first know how does a minimum behave, that if I have a local minimum, does it has have some property? If it has some property, does it allow us to compute easily such a point which satisfies the property? Then the point that we get, is it really a minimum? So, there are few steps in finding a minimum. The first thing we have to know, how does a minimum behave? means that is, does it necessarily follow certain conditions? We 
when we compute such a point which satisfies such a condition the necessary condition we cannot just declare it to be a minimum unless we have certain additional checks and we have additional checks on the point which satisfies the necessary condition to determine whether it is actually a minimum or not. This leads us to certain questions. The questions are just given an f, it is very difficult to say what sort of a condition this minimum local minimum or even the global one would follow. So, what we want to say is that if you put certain additional conditions on f, something more you know about f, it might help. One such condition is differentiability. Now, when we are talking about differentiability, it is very very important to note the following that here we are going to talk about differentiability of a function from R n to R. But most of us are usually habituated in talking about the differentiability of a function from R to R. Now, how do we manage to by some intuition to move from the definition of a derivative from R to R? to the definition of a derivative in R n to R. So, let us just go back and for the time being consider the standard case of R to R. Then the derivative of this function if that exists at x bar is defined as a limit as h tends to 0 where h is the increment of x bar. Okay. Now, I can write this thing in slightly more compact way. I can say that okay, look, I can just bring in here because now this is a constant function, it had, the limit will have no effect on it. So, I can write down the whole thing as this is very clear this manipulation is simple and now observe one thing that if this quantity when divided by h and as h tends to 0 in the limit gives me 0 such a quantity is called the small o of h that is f of x bar plus h minus f x bar minus f dash x bar h is called the small o of h. This is the called the small o. So, in general the derivative for a function from r to r would satisfy this expression. Now, how do I generalize this idea to a function for from R n to R? That is the question. So, it is all about generalizing this idea. Now, let me tell you at the very beginning, I am not being extremely rigorous. One can be extremely rigorous and defining Gato derivative, Fresher derivative and doing lot of other things and showing relations between them, but instead of that, I 
prefer to go by the intuition and that would uh, really help you have some fun and really get on get a hang of the answer before you have really figured logically figured things out. So, that is a bit of fun we can always do. Now, here I would go back just go back for a second I would generalize this part for this case ok. Instead of going back to a different page let me generalize it from here. How do I generalize? Now, instead of h going to 0 because h would be now a vector not a real number I can just take ok the norm of h is going to 0 and then I have f of x bar plus h minus f of x bar minus some vector v which we call the derivative of f at x bar. Now, here instead of multiplication here would be changed to inner product because multiplication is generalized as inner product in R n for higher dimensions. This divided by norm h this limit should be equal to 0 this the same thing we are now writing this is equal to 0. Now, let us uh, note a certain thing this v here is called the derivative of the function from R n to R. So, we have just generalized this fact just put in here. So, you can also write it like this you can also put f of x bar plus h minus f of x bar or equal to f of x bar plus v h plus small o of norm of h. So, you can say okay, this is the definition that there must be a vector v which satisfies this condition and that v is called the derivative of f at x bar. Now, how does f of x bar look like? So, that is a very important question f of x bar now the derivative of f at x bar which is v how does it look like? It would be a small exercise for you to compute that this is a vector consisting of the partial derivatives because there are n variables which we write and that this partial derivative is evaluated at x bar and this is given as a symbol gradient of f at x bar. This is a standard thing known to most of us. So, this is what the derivative is and more uh, precisely it is called the fresher derivative from a more mathematical point of view fresche derivative after named after the French mathematician Maurice Fresche. So, we will not get into so much of details so much of but just for us this is what we would use as the derivative. So, here you can now replace v with grad of f of x bar. Now, let us show something what now if I have this definition of grad of f of x bar can I say something about the local minima if x bar is a local minima. Now, let us look at local minima see every drawing has to be in R 2 drawings cannot be in R 3 or R n R 3 sometimes but it is quite difficult to uh, really get a hang of because we are ourselves in three dimensional spaces we can only visualize things in three dimensional spaces, but it is better to visualize thing the thing we can much easily visualize things in two dimension. So, that is why most of this drawings where even when people draw abstract sets in say Banach spaces or topological vector spaces they think in or pictures in R 2. So, suppose x bar is a local minimum. Now, you have a open neighborhood delta that is a open ball p delta x such that for every x inside this f of x is bigger than f of x bar. Now, what does this mean? So, let this is your vector x bar. 
Now, take any direction w. Now, move a certain distance along the direction w from x. So, that is say x bar plus lambda w, but I can make such a small movement. So, that I can remain I can make take lambda greater than 0 to be small. So, that I can remain within this set you can take it less than 0 and come this side also does not matter because of the symmetry of the ball. So, let me take lambda greater than 0 whatever w I take I can always move in the direction w because you see I am moving in a direction parallel. So, I am parallel to w. So, I can move along the direction w from x bar, but I can choose my lambda so small that I can still remain in the ball b delta x bar. So, this is my So, what I can do is that this thing can also always be kept in b delta x bar x bar plus lambda w. So, when I choose my lambda sufficiently small I can always keep this x bar plus lambda w which is this vec point inside the ball. So, by definition of a local minimum f of x bar plus lambda w minus f x bar must be greater than equal to 0. But then you must observe a fact that now I can apply the definition of differentiation. Once I apply the definition of differentiation, I will have from here gradient of x bar, x bar plus lambda w minus x bar, which will just leave me with lambda w plus order small o of norm of lambda w that is greater than or equal to 0. So, this would imply. gradient of f x bar lambda w plus o of lambda. Now, you might ask me where did this w vanish? You see how does what are these uh, o h functions or small o h functions. So, small o h functions suppose I have functions like this h square plus h. So, this is a small h function because if I divide by h this becomes h into h plus sorry I will just uh, h square plus h cube. H, so, take the function h square plus h cube. So, now what I can do I can take h and here keep h square. Now, if I divide by h and take take limit as h tends to 0 this will go to 0 because here h will go to 0 and h square would go to 0. So, this is an o h quantity. Now, if you see if I make multiply this by lambda here o h o lambda h here I will have lambda square h square and lambda cube h cube. So, I can just take the lambda out in the similar fashion and divide by lambda and take lambda to 0 and get the same answer. So, instead of writing whenever you have lambda multiplied with a vector it is same as writing the as if the order quantity is same as the order quantity of lambda. So, you can always do this trick. Now, what I do because lambda is strictly bigger than 0 I can divide by lambda to get this condition. Now, I will take lambda going to 0 from the positive side because lambda is positive. This is uh, modern day symbolism uh, lambda going down arrow 0. Now, this quantity by the very definition will vanish will go to 0 as we take the limit. So, as lambda tends to 0 we have now you must note that this thing that grad f x bar w is greater than equal to 0, but you should also note that this w was arbitrary I could have taken any other w I could have taken any other w and I could have gone 
and have the same sort of argument and did the same calculations. So, that would lead to the fact that this is true for every w you have in R n. So, now I will put w equal to minus grad of f x bar. So, that would give me grad of f x bar minus grad of f x bar to be greater than equal to 0, but you see I can take the minus sign out just by with the very definition of the very definition of inner product I can take the minus sign out. And then what you can do is that you can now observe that this is once you forget the minus here this is the inner product of x and x means not x and x two same vectors. So, this is by definition is the norm square of f x bar. This implies that grad of f x bar But the distance is always non negative, norm of x has to be negative non negative because it is the distance from 0. So, which means grad of f x bar square here because it cannot be less than equal to 0, if it is less than equal to 0 the only option left is it has to be 0 and this would imply that grad of f x bar equal to 0 and this would imply grad of f x bar equal to 0 because norm of x equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to 0. So, grad of f x bar has to be the 0 vector and this is what is called the necessary optimality condition or the Fermat's necessary optimality condition or the Fermat's rule. So, if x bar is a local minimum then now one has to remember certain things here that this condition is a necessary condition i can show you a function like fx equal to x a cube whose derivative is 0 at a point, but that point is not a local minimum because here if you observe if you calculate f dash 0 it is nothing but 0 for this function, but 0 is not a local or global minimum. So, this condition is necessary, it is not always sufficient, but for some cases yes, if you take f x equal to x square, you see in this case f when f x is x square, you have f dash 0 is equal to 0 and 0 is the global minimum. So, if f is from r to r, it is left to you to decide what is this condition this is the standard thing that you have learned in school f, f dash high school rather f dash x equal to 0. So, this condition is necessary this is very very important not sufficient. So, any point which satisfies this condition need not be a minimum you have to put additional conditions to show that it is a minimum those conditions etcetera will not be as per se the discussion of our story because for a convex case this condition becomes necessary and sufficient. So, tomorrow we are going to talk about convex functions and convex sets and we shall show we shall prove that if for a convex function every local minimum is global and then show the certain additional properties which makes convexity important. So, with this very basic idea about maxima minima and the derivation of the necessary condition and with the knowledge of the differentiability of a function, we will stop our discussion for today.
today and tomorrow we will start our discussion on, on convex optimization. So, before I go, uh, I would say that uh, you might ask me about some books to have a general idea about maxima minima. Uh, the book that I would really uh, prefer is a book called Stories About Maxima and Minima by Vladimir Tikhomirov. Vladimir Tikhomirov is a great optimization theorist, a Russian optimization theorist. Stories About Maxima and Minima published by AMS, now a cheaper edition is also available. Mind you, you need to have some sort of little mathematical maturity at least at the high school level to understand this book. So, thank you very much for your attention and we hope to continue tomorrow with convex optimization in proper.